Karina Baby for the second, we have the Runaway Tea Set. The teapot and the teacups were climbing off the tray. With the creamer and the sugar bowl, they planned to run away. No more work for us, they cried and jumped down to the floor. But as they crashed, each one was smashed and the tea set was no more. There they are running away and there they are crashing to the ground. Next one in Aesop's Fables is sometimes characters in fairy tales do things that we in the real world know should not do. For example, we know it is wrong to steal anything from anyone. This story is about a boy who takes several things from an ogre who eats little boys for breakfast. Do you think young Jack is right in doing what he does? So that's your question. Do you think young Jack is right for stealing from the ogre? This is Jack and the Beanstalk, adapted from the English fairy tales collected by Joseph Jacobs. Once upon a time, there was a poor widow. Uh, there was a poor widow, who had an only son named Jack and a cow named Melky White. All they had to live on was the milk the cow gave every morning, which they took to the market and sold. But one morning, Melky White gave no milk, and they didn't know what to do. What shall we do? What shall we do? Said the widow. Ring, wringing her hands. Cheer up, mother. I'll go and get some kind of work somewhere, said Jack. What a good boy. We've tried that before and nobody would take you, said his mother. We must sell Milky White and with the money open a shop or something. All right, mother, said Jack. It's market day today and I'll soon sell Milky White. Then we'll see what we can do. So he took the cow halter in his hand and off he started. He hadn't gone far when he met a funny looking old man who said to him, good morning, good morning to you, said Jack. Where are you going? The man asked. I'm going to market to sell our cow. Oh, I'll bet you'll strike a good bargain for your cow, said the old man. Say, do you know how many beans it takes to make five? Two in each hand and one in your mouth, said Jack as sharp as a tack. Right you are, said the man, and here they are, the very beans themselves. He went on pulling out of his pockets a number of string beans. As you are so clever, said he, I don't mind doing a swap with you, your cow for these beans. Ho, ho, laughed Jack. That would be a nice trade, but only for you. Ah, you don't know what these beans are, said the man. If you plant them overnight, by morning, they grow right up to the sky. Really, said Jack? You don't say. Yes, it's true. And if it doesn't turn out just so, you can have your cow back. All right, said Jack. He handed over Milky White's halter and pocketed the beans. Back already, Jack, said his mother when he got home. I see you haven't got Milky White, so you've sold her? How much did you get for her? You'll never guess, mother, said Jack. Really? Good boy. Five pounds, ten, fifteen. No, it can't be twenty. I told you, you couldn't guess. What do you say to these beans? They're magical. Plant them overnight and... What? exclaimed Jack's mother. Have you been such a fool to give away Milky White, the best milker in the country, for five little beans? There she threw the beans out the window and sent Jack off to bed without his supper. Jack went upstairs to his little room in the attic as sorry to have disappointed his mother as he was sad at not getting supper. At last, he dropped off to sleep. When he woke up, the room looked odd. The sun was shining into part of it, and yet the rest of it was... There's Milky White. She's gone. She's no longer the best milker in the country because she no longer has any milk. 
they got her pregnant again, she'd have milk the next year. But Alright. So, rest of it was quite dark. Jack jumped up and dressed himself and went to the window. And there he saw, rising from the spot where his mother had tossed the beans the day before, the biggest beanstalk he had ever seen. It went right up and up until it reached the sky. The funny-looking man had told the truth after all. The beanstalk stood quite close to Jack's window. Jack opened the window and climbed onto the beanstalk with rows just like a big ladder. Jack climbed and he 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 climbed until he reached the sky. And when he got there, he found a long, broad road going as straight as an arrow. So he walked along and he walked along and he walked along until he came to a great big tall house. And on the doorstep, there was a great big tall woman. Good morning, ma'am, said Jack quite pleasant, great, quite pleasantly. Could you be so kind as to give me some breakfast? He hadn't had anything to eat the night before and was hungry as could be. It's breakfast you want, is it? said the great big tall woman. It's breakfast you'll be if you don't move away from here. My husband is an org, and there's nothing he likes better than boys boiled on toast. You'd better go before he comes. Please, ma'am, I've had nothing to eat since yesterday morning, said Jack. I may as well be boiled as dead, boiled as dead of hunger. Well, the org's wife was not half as bad. So bad after all. She took Jack into the kitchen and gave him a chunk of bread and a piece of cheese and a jug of milk. But Jack hadn't half finished those when thump, thump, thump. The whole house began to tremble with the noise of the heavy footsteps. Goodness gracious me, it's my old man, said the org's wife. What on earth shall I do? Come along quick and jump in here. And she bundled Jack into the oven, just as the org came in. He was a big one, to be sure. At his belt, he had three calves strung by the hooves, and he unhooked them and threw them down on the table and said, Here, wife, boil me a couple of these for breakfast. Ah, what's this I smell? He sniffed in the air and then said, Fee, fi, fo, fum, I smell the blood of an Englishman. Be he alive or be he dead, I'll grind his bones to make my bread. Nonsense, dear, said his wife, you're dreaming, or perhaps you smell the scraps of the little boy you liked so much for yesterday's dinner. Here you go. And here's the org and his wife. And wash up, and by the time you come back, your breakfast will be ready. So off the org went, and Jack was just going to jump out of the oven and run away when the woman told him not to budge. Wait until he's asleep, she said. He's always had a dozen after breakfast. The org, uh, oh, he's always had a doze after breakfast. The org ate his breakfast. Then he went to the big chest and took out the couple of bags of gold coins. Then down he sat and counted them until at last he had began to nod as he started to snore, and the whole house began to shake again. Then Jack crept, crept out on his tiptoes from the oven, and as he was passing the org, he took one of the bags of gold under his arm, and off he ran until he got to the beanstalk. Then he threw down the bag of gold, which fell all the way down to his mother's garden. Then he climbed down and climbed down and climbed down until at last he got home and told his mother of his adventure and showed her the gold. Well, Mother Jack said, wouldn't I, wasn't I right about the beans? They are really magical, you see. The bag of gold kept them well fed and clothed for some time, but at last it ran out. Jack decided to try his luck once more at the top of the beanstalk. So one fine morning he rose up early and 
got onto the beanstalk and he climbed 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 until at last he came out onto the road again. Up there was a big tall house he had been to before. There, sure enough, was the big tall woman standing on the doorstep. Good morning, ma'am, said Jack, as bold as brass. Could you be so kind as to give me something to eat? Go away, my boy, said the big tall woman, or else my husband will eat you up for breakfast. But aren't you the youngest who came? Aren't you the youngster who came once before? Do you know that very day my old man surely missed one of his bags of gold? There's a str That's strange, ma'am, said Jack. I dare say I could tell you something about that. But I'm so hungry I can't speak until I have something to eat. Well, the big tall woman was so curious that she took him in and gave him something to eat. But he had scantily begun munching, munching it as slowly as he could when thump, 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 they heard the org's footsteps and his wife hid Jack away in the oven. In came the org, who said, fee, fi, fo, fum, and then he had a breakfast of three boiled oxen. Then his wife, then he said, wife, bring me the hen that lays the golden eggs. So she brought it, and the org said, lay, and the hen laid an egg, all of gold, and then the org began to nod his head and to snore until the house shook. Jack crept out of the oven on tiptoe and grabbed the golden hen and was off before you could say Jack Robinson. But the hen gave a loud cluck and woke the org. Jack, just as Jack got out of the house, he heard the org calling, Wife, wife, where is my hen? Jack rushed off to the beanstalk and went down as fast as he could. When he got home, he showed his mother the wonderful hen and said, lay to it. And it laid a solid gold egg. Well, Jack was not content. And it wasn't very long before he wanted to have another try at his luck up there at the top of the beanstalk. So one fine morning, he rose up early and got onto the beanstalk and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed and he climbed until he got to the top. This time he knew better than to go straight to the org's house. When he got near it, he had hid behind a bush until he saw the org's wife come out with a pail to get some water from the well. And he slopped into, and he slipped into the house and climbed into the large cooking pot. He hadn't been there long when he heard thump, 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 as far as, as before, and in came the org and his wife, fee, fi, fo, fum. Here's Jack and his mother and the hen that lays the golden egg. I smell the blood of an Englishman, cried the org. I smell him, wife. I smell him. Do you, my dearie, said the org's wife, then if it's that little rogue that stole your gold and the hen that lays the golden egg, he's sure to have gone into the oven. And they both rushed to the oven, but Jack wasn't there, luckily. And the org's wife said, there you go again, you and your fee, fi, fo, fum. Why, of course, it's the boy you caught last night, and I've just and I've just boiled for you breakfast that you smell. How forgetful I am, and how careless you are not to know the difference between alive and dead after all these years. So the org sat down to breakfast, but now and then he would mutter, Well, I could have sworn. And when he would get up and search the pantry and cupboards and everything, only luckily he didn't think to look in the large cooking pot. 
After breakfast was over, the org called out, Wife, wife, bring me my golden harp. So she brought it and put it on the table before him. Then he sang, and the golden harp sang the most beu sang most beautifully. And it went on singing till the org fell asleep and commenced to snore like thunder. Then Jack lifted up the lid of the cooking pot very quietly and got down like a mouse and crept on hands and knees until he came to the table. Then up he reached and caught hold of the golden harp and dashed with it towards the door. But the harp called out quite loud, Master, master! And the org woke up just in time to see Jack running off with his harp. Jack ran as fast as he could, and the org came rushing after and when and would soon have caught him except for Jack's having a head start and knowing just where he was going. When he got to the beanstalk, the org was not more than 20 yards behind. Then Jack suddenly seemed to disappear. And when the org came to the end of the road and looked down to see Jack climbing down the beanstalk for dear life, the harp cried out again, Master, Master! And the org swung down onto the beanstalk, which shook with his weight and began crumbling down after Jack, and began climbing down after Jack. Jack climbed down and climbed down and climbed down until he was very nearly home. And he called out, Mother, Mother, bring me my axe! Bring me my axe! And his mother came rushing out with the axe in her hand. But when she got to the beanstalk, the she stood stock still with fright for there she saw the org with his legs just through the clouds there he is jack jumped jack jumped down got hold of the axe and gave a chop to the beanstalk that cut it halfway through the org felt the beanstalk shake and, quiv and quiver but he stopped to see what was the matter then jack gave another chop with the axe and the beanstalk was cut in two and began to tumble over the org fell down with a crash and was killed then jack showed his mother the golden harp and commenced it to sing and it sang the most beautiful the the magic harp brought them fame and the goose that laid the golden eggs made them rich Jack married a beautiful princess, and they all lived happily ever after. Oh, Karina, baby, let's do Oh, say, say, oh, playmates, come out and play with me, and bring your dollies three. Climb up my apple tree, shout down my rainbow, slide down my cellar door, and we'll be jolly friends forevermore, more, more. It was a sunny day, she could not come out to play. She said with tearful eyes, my dolby's got the flu, boo hoo 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 hoo. I ain't got no rainbow, I ain't got no cellar door. But we'll be jolly friends forever more, more, more. Karina, baby, I love you and I miss you. And I hope that you're having a great day today. Uh, do you think Jack was right or wrong to steal all that stuff from the org? Uh, in other renditions, it was because the org actually killed Jack's father and the stuff actually belonged to him. But um, he didn't know it until after the fact. But um, that rendition doesn't have that part in there. I hope that whatever you're doing today you are happy and that you are okay and that you're safe and that you're warm and that you're well fed i love you and i miss you honey i will always love you